الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue reading in the book by Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى that he has entitled al kabair al kabair al kabair the major sins the major sins and we have been reading from the portion of the author he has mentioned Kabair al lisan the major sins related related to the tongue we continue reading the author he says babu man habahu nas khawfan min lisanihi babu man habahu nas khawfan min lisanihi the chapter with regards to the one the people fear because of of his tongue, the one that people have a heba for. They have a heba for him because of because of the fear they have from him with regards to his tongue. We know that the word heba normally is used to refer to reverence and honor and respect that one will have. It's a type of fear that one will have for somebody, but it's a fear that's coupled with love and reverence, heba. And the people of nobility, they have this. Also, sometimes people who are not necessarily loved, they will, they will have a type of heba, people of authority and people of command. And they will have a presence about them that uh, they have some dignity with them or some respect with them. And this type of presence that they have is known as a heba. And the people of righteousness and piety and the people of knowledge, they have this. But it could be likewise in other individuals, people of, people of authority and the likes. Here the heba is not out of respect. Here there are people, the author he's referring to, that one uh, will avoid them and leave them. And he will show them respect, not for, for respecting them as individuals, but rather to be safe from their harm. Showing them some type of respect and being kind to them, being kind to them or courteous to them in order to be safe from the harm that they have with them. Because some individuals, they're known for evil, and they're known for sharr, especially from the, uh, the aspect of the tongue. So here the author, he's referring to this affair. The chapter of the one, the people, they have a haber from him. They have a haber from him, yani, yani they have this uh, reverence, but it's like a type of, yani, they, they show him uh, some type of courtesy, but out of fear of his tongue. Khawfan min lisanihi. Khawfan min lisanihi. So it's not out of respect. It's not out of respect for him as an individual, but it's with regards to hoping to be safe from him and being safe from his tongue and the evils that, that he carries with him. So the author, he says, ta'ala And the statement of Allah the Most High, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ وَيْلٌ وَيْل لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Mentioning the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَيْل وَيْل it means, يعني, may he be destroyed. It's karimatu. Uh, al halak with adab. It's a dua. Wail. Wail. The people of knowledge they differed about this. Some of the some of them they said, as I mentioned, that it's a statement of uh, of tahdeed wal wa'id and dua, meaning may he be destroyed and may he be punished. Yani, uh, and others they mentioned that wail it is a, a valley uh, in the hellfire. Wadin fi jahannam. That it's a valley in the hellfire. In any case, this is something that someone will say. Uh, to someone who has done something wrong and uh, should be punished or reprimanded in the likes like this. So Allah, he mentioned wail. For who? Likulli humaza lumaza. Likulli humaza lumaza. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned al-humaza al-hammaz bil-qawm wal-lumaza al-lammaz al-lammaz bil-fi'l. Al-lamaz ay bil fi'l that the the humaza any this is uh, uh, a word referring to the one who belittles the people with his statements. He finds fault and he belittles and he speaks ill about the people's reputations and, and their honor with his statements. And uh, uh, humaza, he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala the one who does that with his actions. The one who does that with his actions. Some of the people have mentioned uh, contrary to that, that the humaza is the one with the actions, and the lumaza is the one who belittles the people with, with his tongue. 
in any case, what is meant here? يعني يزدري الناس يزدري بالناس وينتقصوا بهم. And he finds fault with the people, whether it's with his actions or whether it's with his his speech. He's somebody who is always finding fault with the people and belittling them, and pointing out their mistakes, and making fun of them, and laughing at them, and and, and putting them down in the likes like this. And Ibn Abbas and رضي الله عنهما he mentioned طعن معياب. And the meaning of the humaza lumaza. The one who finds fault with the people and he speaks, speaks ill of them and the one who picks out and blames others and mentions them in a bad light. And this is what has come. And also it has been mentioned from Rabi' ibn Anas. Rahimahullah ta'ala al-humaza yahmizuhu fi wajhihi wal-lumaza yahmizuhu min khalifihi. And he some of the intents or that which has been mentioned and yani for the meaning of these words, the one is the humaza, he's the one who finds fault and he belittles the people in their face. And the lumaza is the one who finds fault and he belittles them behind their back, behind their back. And this meaning likewise uh, has come that, and it, it has also come opposite from that likewise. And even in any case, these two words, they're similar in their meaning and they both have the, the, the meaning of backbiting and, and carrying tales. Hamazin masha'in bin namim. Hamazin masha'in bin namim, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in, in, in his book and, uh, and, uh, and the like. So, hamzu wa lamzu is to speak ill of the people and to find fault with them and to speak bad about them and to point out their faults, whether it's done with the tongue or sometimes it will be done in actions and the likes like this. Maybe somebody will point at somebody and belittle them, or maybe he will stick his tongue out at somebody and, uh, and, 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 and belittle him of them, or he will move his face in a particular manner and he will move his head. Yani yeah, indicating to individuals and what he intends by that is to belittle them and to, and to find fault with them and, and the like. So whether it's done in their face or behind their back or whether it's done with the tongue, yani yeah, in speech or in action, all of this here, uh, all of this here is, uh, is, is included. And this is something that is, that is blameworthy. Humazatun lumazatun. Yani yeah, the people of knowledge, they mentioned that the ta here is for mubalagha. Is for mubalagha. So this is why they mention the meaning is hammaz, walammaz, yani ism mubalagha. So this is somebody who does this a lot. Kathir al hamzi, wa kathir al lamzi lil nas. The one who is always finding fault with the people and always belittling them and talking bad about them. And uh, there are uh, uh, a number of manners that that can be done, either in their face or behind their back, or with the tongue or or with the actions. So this is what is intended here, and this is a major sin. And these people are threatened with a blazing fire. And, and, and with a blazing fire. Yani wariyadu billah, because of this action. Because of this action. So the author, he says, An Aisha radiyallahu anha, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, inna sharra nasi manziratan inda Allahi yawman qiyama man wada'ahu nas aw tarakahu nas ittiqa'a fuhshihi ittiqa'a the author, he mentioned the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that verily the, yani the people who have the most evil rank with Allah azza wa jal, the people who have the most evil rank with Allah azza wa jal on the day of resurrection, those who the people have left them, the people have left them, and yani they have abandoned them and turned away from them because uh, out of fear of their indecency and their foulness and their evil out of fear of their indecency and their foulness uh, and their evil. And this hadith, it has a story. And, and, and uh, it, is, uh, it is known, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated this narration and a man, he was approaching the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he seen him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bi'sa akhu al-ashira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he seen that man coming and then he said, oh, this is the evilest of his tribesmen. This man right here is a, is a foul and an evil man. Yani the worst of his tribesmen, this person here, he's known, he was somebody who was known for fisq. Yani he was known for disobedience and he was known yani for, uh, for sins and the likes like this and for, a foul, and, and for being upon a foul way. And whenever he came, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَانُ Let him in. Let him come in. And then he well, was nice to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he spoke to him with good manners. With good manners. And he, he said good words to him and was kind to him. And then after he took his need, he left. And then Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked about that. 
She asked about that. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he informed her, he said, he said, you have never known me to be a hypocrite. You have never known me to be a hypocrite. And this is not what, what, what is intended here. Uh, and then he mentioned this narration. Shar inna sharra nasi manziratan inda Allahi yawm al-qiyamah man tarakuhu nasi tiqa'a fuhshihim aw tiqa'a sharrihim that verily, O oh Aisha, the, the most evil and the worst of the people in rank and status with Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of resurrection are those individuals that the people leave them. At a, the, those people leave them fearing their indecency and their vulgarness and fearing the foulness and the evil that they have with them. So this is a, an indication uh, of a number uh, of benefits. And from them is that the one who announces his sin and there's no backbiting for him. And the one who is known to be an open sinner and he has evil with him and his speech and in his deed to warn from him and to mention him in an ill manner like that so that people are aware of him, this is not considered backbiting. This is not considered uh, backbiting. And there's a number of affairs related to the issue of backbiting and the author, he has a chapter and he's specific to, to the issue of al-ghibah. We take those details there, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. But, but here the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned this about him. Also from the benefits uh, of this affair is that uh, it's befitting and proper for a person of intelligence and sound mind that if he has to deal with individuals who are known for evil, if he is forced in his daily affairs to deal with individuals who are corrupt uh, and people who are known for indecency or vulgarness, that he should be courteous to them yani, in order to get away from them and in order to avoid their harm. And sometimes we will have individuals uh, uh, that we have to deal with on a daily basis or from time to time in an occupation or in dirasa and studies and the likes like this and these individuals they're known for evil whenever one sits with them they will backbite and they will be little individuals or they will have a foul tongue and they will speak about affairs that are indecent and not permissible and that they will have manners that that, that are lowly and a person he will be uh, uh, and he, it, it, it bothers him to even be around them but a person he's forced to deal with him and he would not want to deal with him. He would not want to be around him. Or even sometimes there are individuals like this. And a person, he doesn't have to be around them, but he will bump into them. Yani he will see them on the street or somewhere or this place or that place. And he will ha have interactions with them. Any individuals that are known f f for lying or for backbiting or for carrying tales or for belittling people or, or for having sharr and evil with them in their speech or in their dealings. So if a person, he knows somebody like this, he will not face him in the same manner. And he, and he will not uh, deal with him in a harsh way. Rather, he will be kind to him and courteous to him long enough to get away from him. He will smile at him and say, how are you doing? Everything, how is your family? Everything's good. Uh, I'm, excuse me, I have an appointment. Like this. And he will move around to avoid that person. To avoid that person. Because if one was to accompany him for long, he would draw him into the evil that he's in. Yeah, and he were, at very minimum, he would have to listen to the foulness that the person is upon. So therefore... This is a, a great benefit, and it's called al mudarat Yudarihi. And al mudarat is one of a person who will be courteous or kind to somebody in, in order to be safe from their harm. In order to be safe from their harm. He will not sacrifice his religion or anything from the affairs of his deen or compromise any aspect of obedience to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will simply smile uh, and he will say a nice word and then he will leave. And he will leave in this manner. He will leave in this manner. So this is considered al mudarat and this is from the noble manners uh, of a Muslim. And he will use it in this manner with, with the foul people. And likewise, he will have mudarat with his brothers. And in courtesy and, and kindness. And sometimes maybe he's in a rush and he has to go. But he will bump into one of his brothers. He will not just leave him and, 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 and the likes. Brother, he will stop and he will, even in his hastiness, he will give him time and smile in his face and ask about his family. And, and then excuse himself in a nice manner like this. And this is called mudarat. And this is from the beautiful manners. Uh, of a believer, but especially it's beneficial to have in cases like this and dealing with people of evil. Whenever one, uh, if he were to meet him in that manner, some people they have authority or, they, or if you reprimand them, it will not help. It will only cause the situation to become worse. So therefore a person, he just wants to get away from them and be safe from their harm yani, in the easiest way. So therefore he will smile and he will say hello yani, like this and uh, listen to the need and then move and then move. Just as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he did. Whenever he seen him coming, he said, oh, this, is the, the worst, this is the worst of the people from, from, from his tribesmen. But then when the, whenever he came to the door, he said, Ethan, and then he spoke to him and he talked to him and he smiled with him and then the man left. He took care of his need. And then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this issue here. And this is the point uh, of the author. Uh, the point of the, uh, of the author, that there are individuals 
then one will leave them and he will not like them and he will not want to be around them and he, he would not want to be around them because of his tongue because of the words that he says and the manner that he speaks and the affairs that he's involved in so this is the issue here and yani that some people they are like that some people they they are like that they have fuhsh on their tongue they have fuhsh, they have fuhsh, fuhsh on their tongue after this the author he mentions uh, another chapter and it's directly related he says babul badha wal fuhsh babul badha wal fuhsh the chapter of al badha wal fuhsh the word uh, badha yani it means indecency and many times it's with, with, with regards to the person's tongue. And that, that his tongue, that, that his tongue is foul. He, he will say words of indecency. A, a lowly tongue, a tongue that speaks about lowly and, uh, and uh, disgusting or affairs that are that are, are, are from the worst of the affairs uh, yani, uh, and they're foul and indecent and likewise it fuhsh it has a similar meaning yani, because it fuhsh and it comes in the text al fuhsh wal fahisha wal fawahish wal fahsha these words they have similar meanings and, and they include all aspects of sins that have gone to to the peak uh, 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 of uh, indecency and foulness yani the sin al mutanahi uh, and the, 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 the sins that are just you know, going to you know, uh, the, the limits with regards to indecency and foulness and wickedness. These sins are called fuhsh or fahsha or fahisha or fawahish. And many times it's used to refer to zina, but it's not restricted to zina. So the fuhsh can be with the tongue, and likewise it can be in the actions. But whenever we see here, like in this uh, chapter title, the word al badha Coupled with fuhsh, al badha is going to be referring to the affairs of the tongue, the indecent and the lowly and the despicable affairs uh, of the tongue and the speech in this manner. And then al fuhsh is going to be with regards to the actions and, uh, and Allah knows best. So the author he says, Babu al badha'i wal fuhsh wa qawlillahi ta'ala. In the statement of Allah the Most High, waladina la yashhaduna azur, wida marru bil lagwi marru kirama. And those who do not witness لا يشهدون الزور they, they do not witness الزور الزور يعني الباطل they do not witness this لا يشهدون لا يحضرون له لا يحضرون مجالس الباطل لا يشهدون الزور they do not witness that meaning they do not, they do not attend the gatherings of falsehood they do not attend the gatherings of falsehood and the gatherings of evil the gatherings of falsehood nor the gatherings of evil and if they pass by uh, feign and foul speech, vain and foul speech, they pass by in a noble manner. Again, the author, he's referring to those verses in Surah Al-Furqan, clarifying the attributes of Ibad al-Rahman, the true slaves and servants of, uh, of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he has begun a number of chapters in this manner with some of these verses, different verses according to the chapter topic here with regards to to the tongue and yani that, that these individuals that, that are righteous and pious and those who are obedient to Allah and they're known to be upright upon uh, steadfastness and uh, obedience then uh, from their manners that they don't even witness the gatherings of, uh, of indecency and they don't even sit in the gatherings of falsehood whenever there are statements of evil and statements of, uh, of indecency or vulgarness being mentioned they don't even attend these affairs Many of the scholars uh, of tafsir have mentioned from the meanings of this la yashaduna zur that they do not witness the, the gatherings of zur. They mentioned uh, the pagan holidays and the holidays of the Jews and the Christians. And it's very suitable for our days now to know that those holidays of the Jews and the Christians and the pagans, all of the holidays besides the holidays uh, that are legislated in, in Islam, they're, they're all false and they are foul and they are evil and they are wicked. Some of them are worse than others, but all of them, they share in that. And they are majalis zur batil and they are gatherings of falsehood and, and evil. Gatherings of falsehood and celebrations of falsehood and evil. A believer, he will not partake in that whatsoever. He will not aid, assist, or partake in that whatsoever. Rather, he will free himself from that. Rather, he will, he will free himself from that. And this is the way of a Muslim. He will establish the tawheed, and from that, and yabra'a. That he will be free. He will be free from shirk and his people. 
he'll be free from shirk and his people. And even like from that, being free from wickedness and evil and foulness in his people likewise. So it's not allowed to sit in the people of falsehood in their gatherings, the people of shirk or the people of disbelief or the people of innovation likewise to sit in their gatherings, nor the people of fisk and corruption and, 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 uh, and the people who are speaking about uh, the indecent uh, and foul affairs from the affairs of the dunya. Likewise, it's not, a, uh, it's not permissible to sit in these gatherings. And the, from the traits of the righteous and the pious and those who are the beloved slaves of Ar-Rahman, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ They do not sit in the gatherings uh, of Zul. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِالْلَقْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ And if they pass by these affairs, and he passed by people uh, delving in vain speech, or in foul speech, or in dis indecent speech, or the likes of these gatherings, they pass by with, with, with nobility. Meaning they do not meet their, their ignorance with ignorance, or their indecency with indecency. Rather, they, they move uh, in a manner that they will be safe from sin. And they will pass by that with honor and dignity, and they will not delve in. And they will leave that affair. So if a person he's involved in, in uh, foul and indecent speech, a, a believer, he will leave him. He will leave him and he will go to another gathering. Uh, he, will leave, he will leave that gathering if he's uh, involved in found and indecent speech from the affairs of the dunya. From the affairs of, of the dunya, speaking about women or speaking about yani, that which is impermissible and so on and so forth, and, or backbiting the people and the carrying tales about the people, all of this, uh, or speaking about the, the, the affairs that are haram and, he, and the likes like this, all of this, a believer, he will not attend that. He will leave from that. He will reprimand them if he, if, he, if he has courage and if he has knowledge. And at very minimum, he will leave them. At very minimum, he will leave them in that. And, and if it was with regards to the affairs of the deen, then the obligation is even greater. Then the obligation is e even greater. If they're sitting and, and there are people backbiting the scholars, and if they don't scholars of the of Ahl sunnah the, the, the upright scholars who are known from the people of the Sunnah, and they're speaking ill of them and belittling them, he will never sit in the type of this gathering. He will never sit in a type of this gathering. What do you have to be done? Or if they are uh, speaking about the rulers and the likes like this, likewise, he would not sit in this type of gathering, gathering uh, with, with the people uh, of wickedness and evil who have hatred for, for the people of knowledge, or they are in opposition to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are just examples. These are just examples. And in any case, these gatherings, one will, he, not, he will not witness them. He will not witness them. So the point is here, وَمَيْدَ مَرُّوا بِاللَّقْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا they don't have zur, they don't have baltan in their speech, and they don't even sit in those gatherings. And whenever they pass by people involved in that, they do not get involved in it whatsoever. Rather, they, they remain in a, in a manner of, of dignity and nobility. And, he, and from, that, from that is that they guard their tongue from delving in the likes of what they have delved in, from evil and from falsehood. From evil and from falsehood. After this, the author, he says, And Ibn Mas'ud, رضي الله عنه مرفوعا That uh, the author, he mentioned the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. رضي الله عنه from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا الفاحش ولا البذي حسنه الترمذي حسنه الترمذي so the author he mentioned here the narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said ليس المؤمن ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا البذي that a believer, المؤمن كامل الإيمان and this is with regards to the believer who has complete faith from the perfection of faith and the perfection of Iman is to preserve and protect the tongue from these affairs so a believer, he's not like this ليس بالطعان he's not طعان طعان is also any اسم مبالغة this is the one who يطعن يكثر الطعن والوقية في الناس the one who is always finding fault with people. Ta'ana yat'anu literally it means to stab somebody or to poke somebody like this. Ta'ta'anu fihi. Like this. But here, what is any ta'an fi irdihi? You need to find fault with his reputation and his honor and to speak bad about him and to pick out his faults and to blame him. A believer, he's not like this. Laysa bi ta'an. He's not always finding fault and talking bad about the people. He's not, he's not, he's not like this. A believer, he's not like this. So the people who are like that, they're not believers. What does that mean? Ah, uh -huh, he's a Muslim, huh? We are, if we understand the intent here, he, yani he has a uh, deficiency in uh, the, the obligation of faith, meaning he's a Muslim, but his deen is weak. He's a believer, but his, his belief is weak. Uh, he could even be from Ahl Sunnah, but his obedience to Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is weak, and his following. Uh, likewise, of the pious predecessors is weak because they are not like that. Likewise, they are not like that. Likewise, 
I believe he's not like this. He's not like this. Uh, and he, a, a person, he will hear these narrations and believe in them and then follow them. And he's looking into himself, looking into himself, especially in the society that we live in, that many people, they have uh, become uh, praiseworthy in the eyes of individuals because of some people, if they want to raise their self, they will just start speaking ill about individuals. And there are certain individuals, if they pick them and choose them, in some gatherings, they'll be the most noble of individuals, like the scholar of, of Ahl Sunnah that had been known for years. They can't wait. They'll pick one of them out and name him by his name, and then uh, speak ill of him, and the rest of the people around him will like him even more. And then he will mix, mention somebody else's name from the, from the blameworthy people, and he will praise him, and then after that, those people will like him even more. And this is from yani, ignorance. From ignorance and then the, many times these individuals they don't even know the conditions of wudu or you know if you ask them about uh, uh, if you ask them about juz uh, they, they don't even know what you're talking about what is that what is that and did you memorize the last juz of the quran <laughs> like this and but they, but they would speak about the greatest affairs uh, 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 and the greatest issues in the deen but they themselves had not memorized anything and many of them do not do not know alif ba ta this is something that is very blameworthy. It's very blameworthy. So a believer, he will look at these narrations and he will look at the people around him and he'll have insight with the, the, the days that he lives in and the people in his society that he is around. And, he, and, and those who are upon the straight path, upon uh, knowledge and action, these are the ones that he will follow and that he will accompany. And as for those people who claim that, but it's not seen in their actions, rather it is contrary in their actions. Laysa bi ta'an. Ah, this person is ta'an, subhanAllah. He will stop hanging out with them. He will stop hanging out with them. It's better to have no friends than to have bad friends, than to have bad friends. It's better to have no friends than, than to have bad friends. Layanna sahib sahib. Because the companion, he, he is going to drag you and pull you along with him, whatever he's involved in. If he's involved in good, he will pull, pull you along into that good. But if he's involved in evil, then he will pull you along with him into that. Al mu'min laysa bi ta'an. A believer, he's not always finding fault with the people and speaking ill of the people and belittling the people and talking bad about the people. And talking bad about the people. Wala la'an. And also a believer, he is not la'an. Somebody that, that curses the people a lot. That's, that, that's cursing the people a lot. And he's making dua against them. Making dua against them. The first one is talking bad about them and speaking ill about them and picking their faults out. And the second one is making dua against them. Is making dua against them. A believer, he's not like this and he's not like that. fahish, al badi. And he's also not fahish. And he's not al badi. And fahish is the one who is indecent and, and vulgar here in his actions and, and his manners and his dealings. And also he's not al badi. Al-Badhi, yani the one who has a low, a, a, a lowly tongue, speaking about the, the lowly affairs and the indecent affairs. So this is uh, the, the, the case. A believer, he's not like that. Rather, he's contrary to that. A believer, he will, be, be, he will say that which is good or he will be silent. And uh, he will only speak about the affairs that concern him. And he will not be cursing the people and making dua against the people. Rather, a believer, he makes dua for the people. And this is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And many times there are individuals who, who, who will uh, be doing something that is not praiseworthy. And, and, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he'll make dua for them. He'll make dua for them and not against them. Although he made dua against a number of people, uh, <coughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it came to the issue that any one he will make dua for the people. The one he should make dua for the people. If he sees people in a, on, a, on a bad way, he should not make dua against them. In any case, to, to make the la'an of them, to say la'anahu Allah, uh, or la'ana fulan, and the likes like this, this is not permissible. This is not, this is not permissible. In fuhsh, in the actions and in the tongue, likewise, this is all from the foul way. Whether a believer, he will have uh, uh, good manners and noble conduct. And uh, a believer, he will have uh, beautiful speech. And this is contrary. You know, the one who has foul manners, then he has foul speech. And the one who has a weak deen, then he has a, a tongue that is vulgar and vain and, and is indecent. This is the case. After this, the author, he, he mentioned Wallahu, yani Walid Tirmidhi, wa sahahahu an Abi an Abi Darda, an Abi al Darda radiallahu anhu marfu'ah, also narrated by al Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, from the hadith of Abi al Darda radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ma min shay'in athqalu, 
في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة من حسن الخلق ما من شيء أثقل في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة من حسن الخلق وإن الله يبغض الفاحش البذيئة الذي يتكلم بالفحش The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that there is nothing heavier in the scale of a believer on the day of resurrection than good manners. There's nothing heavier. There's nothing heavier uh, in the scale of a believer on the day of resurrection than, than good manners. Good and noble manners. Again, beginning with Allah azza wa jal, with the tawheed of Allah and the obedience to Allah. And likewise to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then af after that, dealing with the people. Dealing with the people, wanting good for them and hoping good for them, and likewise controlling one's, one's tongue. Controlling one's tongue, and this is in, in, in contrast here. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there's nothing heavier in the scale of a believer on the day of resurrection than noble and good manners. And verily, Allah, he detests al-fahish al badi the one who speaks with indecency and vulgarness. Verily, Allah, he detests. And this is in contrast, that, that, that which is heavy in the scales, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection, the heaviest thing for a believer on that day are his noble manners. Are his noble manners. On the other hand, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِضُ الْفَاحِشَ الْبَذِي أَلَذِي يَتَكَلَّمُ بِالْفُحْشِ In verity, Allah he detests. Al-Bughd, uh, Al-Qurr al-Shadid. Al-Bughd is to, is, is to detest something. Verity, Allah he detests the, the, the one who is al-fahish. The one who is al-fahish and he is foul. And al-bathi. And, and, and the one who is lowly. And, he, and decent and vulgar in his speech and in his actions. And then the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarified, The one who speaks with indecency and vulgarness. The one who speaks with indecency and, and vulgarness. So we see that on one hand, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's mentioning that which is heavy in the scales. That which is heavy in the scales. And that is the noble and the good manners. And the righteous deeds, they're heavy with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's been narrated by Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu uh, in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about this. Yani, to keep it in contrast, kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan. Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan. Thaqilatani fil mizan. Habibatani dhal rahmani. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanallahi al azim. That there are two statements that uh, are light on the tongue and they're heavy in the scales and they are beloved to our Rahman. And that is to say, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim. Subhanallah al Azim. So, this is from the noble manners and from the good manners to glorify Allah and to praise Him with the tongue. To glorify Allah and to glorify His Tawheed, to free Him from all deficiency and to free, from, free Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and create in belief from everything that is not befitting for Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and to glorify Him above all defects and, and, and all faults. Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise him and to mention him with the praise uh, coupled with love and uh, believing that he has the attributes of perfection alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is the greatest subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan two statements that are light on the tongue thakhiratani uh, fil mizan and they're heavy in the scale habibatani lil rahman and they are they are beloved to to our rahman to our Rahman. So the, the, this is in contrast here, the noble manners. The noble manners, they're the heaviest thing in the scale. And Allah, He detests and He hates the one who is, is lowly and baseless and foul and indecent and speaks with vulgar and foul and vain speech. And, and this is in contrast because that which is good and that which is wholesome and that which is beloved to Allah is heavy in the scales. It's heavy in the scales. And that which is foul and that which is evil and that which is considered falsehood and, and, and vulgar, it has no weight in the scales. Allah, he mentioned about those disbelievers and those people who have worked actions of falsehood, even though they thought they were upon something, that they will, Allah will not give them any weight. They will, they will have no weight with Allah Azza wa Jal on the day. Uh, on the day of resurrection. They will have no weight whatsoever. So this is the case. That which is beloved to Allah is heavy. It's heavy in, in the scale of a believer. Well, the one who performs it sincerely. And that which is considered foul and vulgar and vain and falsehood and evil, it has no weight. And it has no benefit for a person uh, in, in the hereafter. After this, the author, he says, What a Muslim and Aishata. What a Muslim and Aishata radiallahu anha marfu'ah. And also, it has been narrated from uh, or collected by uh, Ali Imam Muslim from the Hadith Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said 
إن الرفقة لا يكون في شيء إلا زانه ولا ينزع من شيء إلا شانه يعني this is an amazing uh, amazing narration uh, uh, an amazing narration إن الرفقة لا يكون في شيء إلا زانه ولا ينزع من شيء إلا شانه يعني ذات الرفقة الرفق الرفق it means gentleness it means gentleness it means kindness it means courtesy it means not hastening this is the meaning of rifq al-rifq yani uh, the people of knowledge they say al-lin wa suhula wa ta'anni fi al-umur wa tamahul fiha that a person yani, that has rifq he has gentleness he has kindness uh, and courtesy and it's easy and he's not hasty in dealing with the affairs he takes his time he takes his time in dealing with the affairs so here the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's saying that very rifq this affair uh, of gentleness and calmness and courtesy being nice and not being hasty being nice, taking one's time and not being hasty. This issue here uh, will not be in anything at all except for it will adorn it and make it better. إلا زانه يعني من الزين الزين is to beautify it and to make it uh, beautiful and to make it good. And it's not stripped or taken or removed from anything except for it made it the opposite. The opposite of زين is shame. يعني to, 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 be, uh, to be disfigured and to be disgraced and to be ugly. So there's no situation. There's no situation except that by using gentleness and not being hasty in that situation will bring the situation goodness and make it better. And there's no situation that that is removed from. Meaning a person, he will start, he, he, the, the, the opposite of rifq, yani al-unf wa shidda, yani violence, and to be harsh, and also to be quickly, to, to move quickly, yani taish, recklessness. To be reckless and to be harsh, to be rude and to be mean. Yani the, this, so the gentleness, the rifq is not taken from anything except for it will make it, it will make it ugly. It will make the situation bad. It will make the situation uh, yani ugly. And, and, and this is the case. This is the case. So if a person, he wants to make his affair good, he has to have rifq. He has to be gentle. He has to think before he moves. He has to yani recollect the affair and take the best means to take the best means to, to achieve what, he, what he's hoping for, to think about that first. And, and if not, then the situation is gonna be bad. And if not, then the situation is going, to, is going to be bad. It's very important for a man, particularly, a woman likewise, uh, but a man in his home to, to know these affairs and dealing with the problems in the house from uh, those under one's care with rifq. And this is any from the greatest means of success and having harmony and, and goodness in the home. Because in the home, specifically, everything is not always going right. And, and there's no family that has no problems. And there's always issues and trials and disputes uh, between whether the spouses or the children and the likes like this. But the issue uh, which determines the success and the goodness in the home and the ease and the peace uh, in the house and the love is how those affairs are dealt with is how those affairs are dealt with. So we take it to this hadith. It's a foundation on how to deal with the family. And I mentioned the affairs of the family many times and it's general, but specifically the family, because if we rectify ourselves and our families, then our, our community will be strong and, and will be a means to, to benefit the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam together, together. So by rectifying yourself and, and rectifying your family, this is a means of strengthening the Ummah, strengthening the Ummah. And if the ummah is, is families and families are individuals, mothers and fathers, what are you going to do? SubhanAllah, I just remember uh, recently one of my companions, they, they sent me a benefit from Sheikh Muqbil, rahimahullah ta'ala, that his, his daughter mentioned about him. That whenever he started getting gray hairs in his beard, he said to himself, oh, what have I done for Al-Islam? <laughs> what have I done for Al-Islam? And at least we can rectify our families and be a means to curing the problem and the, to curing the, the humiliation that has befallen us because of disobedience and the humiliation and the degradation that has fallen the, the Ummah for, because of having no concern or care for the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the obedience of Allah. And in beginning with ourselves and in our homes, in our homes and in the means to rectify the, the problems in the homes many, uh, in many situations, they go back to understanding this affair, the affair of gentleness. يعني so, إِنَّ رِفْقَ لَا يَكُونُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَهُ وَلَا يُنْزَعُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَهُ 
that being gentle and not being hasty and being kind and courteous and, and, and not being harsh and rude is never in, it would never be put in a situation except it makes that situation better. And it's never stripped from a situation except for it will make that situation ugly and worse. Ugly and worse. This is the statement of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore a believer, he tried to be easy with the people. He tried to be good with the people. That doesn't mean he'll be a pushover and he will allow disobedience to occur blatantly in his home. No, he will check that. But how does he check that? He will check that, but how does he check that? With rifq, with wisdom, with, with beautiful, beautiful preaching. If there's something or a hot situation, sometimes he'll wait and let it cool down and then he'll address it. Or he'll wait if there's problems going on between a number of individuals in the household, he will wait until they're all done and he'll catch one by himself and address it. And the other one by himself and address it. And at different times, in different situations, even it's been recommended from the Salaf that sometimes a man, he will take his children and separate them. He will take his children, one time he will take one child out for the day by himself. And to get the child away from the other children. And then he will be busy with that child and benefit that child and then come back. And the next time he'll take another child away so that they have time. And especially if they're living in the home together and they're facing each other. And sometimes they will start fighting and quarreling a lot with the children. So from the means of fixing that is to take them away from each other. The, the, the father, he will take one out. Uh, sometimes he'll take them out together. Other times he'll take one at a time out. And, and speak to them as individuals and talk to them and advise them and then the next time take another one out and then another time take them all out together so on and so forth like that and then he cultivating and raising the child cultivating and raising the child and then addressing those issues before reminding them of Allah Azza wa Jal and the promise of the hereafter and the importance of holding fast to obedience and the outcome of the disobedient and the like like this and the children have to be cultivated any rifq with, with, with rifq subhanallah even Whenever the people of God, as they discuss the attributes and characteristics of the da'i and the caller, the caller to Allah, the one who is going to be uh, involved in calling to Allah from the first attributes they mention, along with any ikhlas and siddq and ad amal bil ilm, they're going to mention the issue of rifq from the very first things that they will mention. The characteristics of a caller to Allah uh, after being, having knowledge and application and being sincere and truthful is that they will be gentle. They will be gentle in that which they command and they'll be gentle in that which they prohibit, and the likes like this. So after this, uh, the author, he says, What did Tirmidhi? Wa Hassanahu, Ali bin Mas'ud, and Radiallahu anhu, Marfu'ah. And also collected by uh, at Tirmidhi. And he has declared it to be Hassan, meaning it's an authentic uh, narration. From the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, Radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ala ukhbirukum biman yahrumu ala nar, aw tahrumu alayhi al nar. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Shall I not inform you? Shall I not inform you of the one who is uh, prohibited from the fire? Yani, or the fire who is prohibited from him. And yani, both of them have the same meaning. And yani, the one who will not enter the fire. Shall I not inform you about the one who will not enter the fire? And yani, this is the manner uh, from the manners uh, of the Prophet ﷺ in teaching. It's called yani, Usluba Tashwiq. And it has a, a number of, of methodologies to do this, but it's drawing the, the person who's listening, drawing his attention and making him yearn and hope to hear what's coming next. So if you heard this now, what do you think? And would you like, would, would, can I, should I not inform you of the one who is, uh, is, is prohibited from the fire or the one that the fire is prohibited from him and he will not be touched by the fire? Should I not inform you of, of him? What do you do now? You're waiting. The, the heart is waiting now. What, what, what? Tell us, O oh Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tahrumu ala kuli qareebin hayyin and sahal. Tahrumu ala kuli qareebin, qareebin hayyin and sahal. That the fire is prohibited from every person who is near. And he near to the people. He, and near to the people. Contrary to the previous chapter, huh? The person who is known with the foul tongue, and the person who is known for indecency and vulgarness, he's known for that. He's not near to the people. Rather, the people can't wait to get away from him. Rather, the people can't wait to get away from him. Or they, they'll do whatever they can, smile to him and be nice to him, and maybe even give him some money just to get away from him. Just to get away from him. So the, contrary to that, the one who yani, the, the, the one who the fire is prohibited from, yani, he's close to the people. He's near to the people. He's dealing with the people. He's mixing with the people. He's helping the people. He's bearing the burden of the people. Or, or he's bearing the hardships from the people. He's not harming the people likewise. Hayyan sahal. Yani, he's easy. He's easy to deal with. He's easy. If, if he advises you, he advises you in an easy manner, in a good way. 
And if you advise him and he accepts it from you in an easy man in a good way. And some people, if they advise, they, they, they advise in the harshest and the rudest way. They, they advise in the harshest and the rudest way. Others, when they're advised themselves, they become arrogant and boastful. And now you have an enemy if you advise him with the smallest thing. And the manner like this, this is not the way. So therefore, we see that from the means of being safe from the punishment of the hellfire, is that a person, he will be easy with the people. Uh, and he will be easy to deal with likewise. And he, going both ways, if he's giving or he's taking. Whenever he's giving or he's taking, he's easy to deal with. And it's not hard to deal with him, to get something from him, whether it, it, it is aid or support or help or fi finances or whatever the case it may be, and to get something from him it is easy to deal with him. And even if he's not able to give it, he will uh, excuse himself in the best manner and clarify his excuse in a good way. And likewise, if, uh, it's given to, if one is giving him advice or directing him, he, he's easy to deal with and he will accept that. And he, without being boastful or arrogant and, and proud. And he, this is all from the means uh, of being safe from the hellfire. Of being safe from the hellfire. And again, these affairs, any, they begin in a person's home. And if a person is able to manage himself uh, with rifq and to think before he acts in his home, then dealing with the people that he sees from time to time will be easy, even easier for him. If he can manage to do this in his home with the people who he sees daily, whenever he's tired and whenever he's hungry, and the likes like this, any of the times whenever he will be tried the most, and his manners and his conduct, if he can manage to, uh, to fear Allah with this affair, in this affair, then uh, dealing with the rest of the people from the brothers and, and, and the companions and the co-workers and the likes like this, and, uh, and the people that one has to deal with daily, it will be even easier and, and, and even easier. And for this reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خيركم 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 The best of you are the best to his, his family, yani to his wife, to his wife, yani, and, and I'm the best, uh, and I'm the best of you to his wife, to his family, to his family, yani, to, his, to his wives, uh, like, like this, because the person who is able to manage that properly, and everybody has faults, but yani, the one who is striving, his faults are fewer and, and, and shorter and less severe. And less severe. As for if a person is not striving, then the faults will be greater and, and, more, and more severe, and the problems will be larger and heavier and, and longer lasting. So therefore, having rifq, having rifq. And after this, the author, he says, وَلِي مُسْلِمٍ عَنْ جَرِيرٍ وَلِي مُسْلِمٍ عَنْ جَرِيرٍ Also narrated by Imam Muslim from the Haditha Jarir, Ibn Abdullah al-Bajri, رضي الله عنه, he says, the, he says here, man, you haram, arifqa, you haram al khayra kullahu. And this is actually, and he should say marfu'an. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned this. And in Sahih Muslim, man, you haram, arifqa, you haram al khayra kullahu. That whoever is uh, prohibited, arifqa, and you haram, and he's hirman, then he's prohibited all of the good. Whoever is prohibited, he did not have, he did not have rifq, he was not able to have rifq, he was not able to have gentleness and kindness and courtesy, he was not able to have forbearance and patience in dealing with the people, and he became hasty and harsh and rude, and again, the opposite of rifq is al-umf wa shidda, and to be harsh, to be rude, to be mean, and to be hasty, and the life like this, whoever did not have the rifq, then he will be prohibited from all of the good. He will be prohibited from all of the good, not just from the good, but rather from all of the good. So that means that all of the good lies in being, uh, and being gentle, and, and being kind and courteous, and, and uh, not being hasty, and not being reckless. All good lies here. Because if the one who does not have that, then he is prohibited from all of the good. So therefore, all of the good lies in this, in this affair here. Having rifq, having gentleness, having calmness, ha having a, a, a sound of mind and dignity and thinking before one he speaks and he acts and weighing out the, the, the affairs and not being hasty and not being reckless and not running his mouth immediately whenever his emotions come and he thinking before that and holding himself and checking his tongue and likewise his hands and his actions before he speaks and then he'll think about the best way and to move and to take the situation and to adjust the affair and to rectify the mistake or the problem at hand and the likes like this, he will have wisdom. He will have wisdom. Likewise, it's been narrated, narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha, also collected in Sahih Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told her, Inna Allaha rafiqun, yuhibbu arifqa, uh, yuhibbu arifqa fi amri kulli. That verily Allah, he is, uh, he's rafiq, he's the most uh, gentle and kind. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves the gentleness and kindness in every and every affair uh, in this narration here in allah rafiqun yuhibbu ar-rifq wa yu'ti 'ala ar-rifq ma la yu'ti 'ala al-'unf wa ma la yu'ti 'ala ma siwahu this is a narration here with a great benefit with a great benefit the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said verily allah he is rafiq and he is and that's one of his names ar-rafiq subhanahu wa ta'ala and that from his attributes is rifq and he's, and he's described with that, with that gentleness and kindness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, not being hasty in the affairs in a manner befitting his majesty. In a manner befitting his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's described with rifq, tabaraka wa ta'ala. But then the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَيُعْطِي عَلَى الرِّفْقِ مَا لَا يُعْطِي عَلَى الْعُنْفِ وَمَا لَا يُعْطِي عَلَى مَا سِوَاهُ That Allah, He will give, and He will bring about, because of gentleness and uh, not being hasty, that which He does not give or bring about because of because of harshness and rudeness and violence and that which he does not give based upon anything else so many times we will see that a person why would, why would he be harsh with somebody why would he be rude with somebody many times why, sometimes for example he will ask somebody to do something they don't do it so then what does he do he'll be harsh to them or be rude to them and the likes like this in order to in order to do what to get them to do it the person who's, who, is, who has umf, and the one who has shidda yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to get something. He's trying to get something. He's trying to get a point across. He's trying to get somebody to, do, to perform something. He's trying to get somebody to do something. So therefore, we'll be harsh to them or rude to them. And, and the likes like this. But the Prophet Sallallahu he said that Allah, He gives by way of rif, that which He does not give by way of umf. So if you're trying to get something, then don't do it by way of umf and, and harshness and rudeness and being hasty. Rather do it by way of rif because Allah, He gives in this manner. Allah, He gives in this manner. So Allah, the affairs in the hand of Allah. So to give what He wants, you have to follow His legislation and His deen. And Allah, He gives in this manner that which He does, he does not give by harshness or by rudeness or by violence and, and the likes like this. So therefore, a believer, again, he remembered that. I want to get this point across. How can I do it? Not by being rude. Not, not, not by being rude. And not by, and not by being harsh. And not by being harsh. And this is the, the asl and the foundation and the base Yani, that a person, he will base his actions and his dealings upon. But there are circumstances whenever it's required to be harsh. So this is not a, in, in every situation, in every circumstance. But a believer, he has, has to have wisdom and know that the foundation in dealing with the people is with gentleness and kindness and not being hasty.